Jake the Philharmonic Dog, written by Karen Lafrac, illustrated by Marsan Baranski. Richie thought the small black dog sounded like he was singing. One look at the little fellow swishing his tail back and forth was enough for Richie to know this was the perfect dog for him. Jake's musical barking and rhythmic tail wagging reminded him of something else he loved. His job as principal stagehand for the Philharmonic Orchestra. Jake and Richie did lots of things together. Jake loved going to the park with Richie to play fetch. As birds chirped in a nest high above, Jake threw back his head and answered. Jake and Richie also loved long car rides. Jake answered each honking car. His tail moved back and forth, back and forth like windshield wipers. But there was one sound that Jake didn't like, thunder. The first time the sky grew black and lightning flashed across it, followed by a boom, Jake's ears flattened. He went around and around in circles, his tail between his legs. Hey pal, do you want to play fetch? Richie threw a rolled up newspaper, but Jake didn't notice. Jake, want a biscuit boy? Richie rattled the box of special treats, but Jake just whimpered. Richie didn't know what to do. Music usually helped him think, so he turned on the CD player. The sound of violins streamed through the air. Suddenly, Jake cocked his head and started thumping his tail back and forth, back and forth. There you go. That's better, isn't it? Said Richie, gently scratching Jake behind his ears. Who knew you liked music so much? You know what? I'm going to take you to work with me tomorrow. And they shook on it, hand and paw. The next day, Richie and Jake drove to the Grand Concert Hall. Jake lifted his ears as he entered the backstage area. So many new sounds. So many new scents. His eyes swiveled as a sea of legs weaved around him. Jake looked proudly at Richie as he set up chairs and music stands on the stage, putting sheets of music on each one. The musicians took the stage and they all found their seats. Suddenly, someone was kneeling by Jake, giving him the neck rub of his life. Jake, this is Glenn, said Richie. He's the concert master. He'll run the rehearsal until the conductor arrives. The bird songs seemed to fill the air. Jake threw back his head. But just as quickly as it had begun, the bird melody stopped. The only sound now was of Richie's laughter. Jake, Richie said, there aren't any birds here, boy. That's the flute players warming up. They're part of the woodwind section of the orchestra. All at once, Jake heard the loudest noise. The musicians all looked down. Jake, Richie patted him on the head. That's not a car horn, that's a French horn, see? The brass instruments are warming up now. Richie knew what was coming next. But before he could say a word, a drum roll started, quiet at first, then swelling louder and louder, followed by a crash. 
Boom! Everyone in the orchestra froze and watched wide-eyed as Jake turned circles off stage, his tail between his legs. Jake, Jake, it's not Thunder Boy. It's just not. It's just the percussion section. Richie called out, but Jake didn't stop running in circles. Glenn, quick, have the string section play something, anything. Glenn signaled to the musicians and the strings began to play. As soon as he heard the soothing sound of violins, Jake sat up straight and listened. His tail now wagged back and forth, back and forth. Good boy, Jake. The string section is your favorite, isn't it, pal? Richie said, scratching Jake behind the ears. As Glenn stepped to the podium, Richie said, listen to how all these instruments sound together when they play in an orchestra. Jake cocked his head as Glenn began to wave his arms at the orchestra. Why was he trying to shoo them away? Jake wondered. But then the most wonderful sound filled the air as the whole orchestra played together. Even Jake knew to keep quiet. Richie put a cushion in the wings so Jake could have his own special place to sit while the musicians played. As the rehearsal was going well, Richie said, come on, buddy, let's go for a walk in the park before the concert. By the time they returned to the hall, Jake was kind of sleepy. I'll be back in a minute, boy. I just need to take care of a few things, Richie said. Jake wandered lazily across the empty stage, waiting for Richie, sniffing a chair here, a music stand there. When he reached the podium, Jake saw something that perked him up a bit, a stick. Jake took it and wandered off the stage to find Richie so that they could play fetch. But there was Jake's plump new cushion and he couldn't resist it. He yawned. The stick fell from his mouth and rolled behind the cushion. Then Jake curled up and took a nap. The sound of the orchestra warming up woke Jake a short time later. As he stretched, someone he'd never seen before walked onto the stage. The audience clapped and the musicians picked up their instruments. The man went to the podium and bowed to the audience. Everyone was quiet. But then the man began to search the podium, looking for something. Oh no, said Richie, the baton. I know I put it out before we went to the park. What's happened to it? Jake watched as everyone began to fidget, the orchestra and the audience. He took the opportunity to meet the new person and try to start a game of fetch. Jake nosed behind the cushion, got a stick, and trotted out onto the stage before Richie realized what was happening. Bravo, bravo! The audience burst into wild applause upon seeing Jake with the baton in his mouth. The conductor raised an eyebrow at his surprised guest. Then he turned, bowed to the little dog, and took the baton from his mouth. The audience rose to their feet and cheered. Jake was so happy that his tail began to wag back and forth, back and forth. The conductor watched, then raised the baton and followed Jake's beat. He turned to the orchestra to start the music. The audience quickly took their seats. Jake scurried off to the wings to take his, and Jake's first official concert began. Coda. From then on, Jake came to work with Richie every day. After all, the principal stage paw had to bring the conductor his baton at the start of each performance. <laughs> <laughs>